Now, in an interesting turn of events, obviously, one of the things that's been going on recently is kind of this uh, this catch up in the Chinese market for uh, AI or artificial intelligence, right? And they've been using basically the innovations that the Western cultures have come up with in the computing world to do this. And now we have a, a pretty crazy turn of events where the U.S. government has halted the exports of NVIDIA and AMD server GPUs, including but not limited to the H100, A100, MI250. And this is for basically shipping them to China and Russia. This morning, the Shanghai Macro uh, on Twitter showed a document that showed that the U.S. was suspending all GPU shipments from NVIDIA and AMD, such as the A100 and H100 to China and Russia. It was considered a rumor then, but Reuters confirmed that the U.S. government had created a new license requirement for those affected integrated circuits a few hours ago. U.S. government halts exports of AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards and more to China and Russia in the newest license agreement. The tweet below from the Shanghai Macro Strategist on Twitter shows a document that mentions NVIDIA's H100 and A100 data center GPUs. The document was machine translated for those unable to understand the document, which is posted below. AMD informed that it has received an urgent notice from the headquarters. Suspend the shipment of all data center GPU cards, MI100 and MI200 in China. Count the shipments of MI100 in China. Count the list of customers who have shipped the MI200 in China goods. AMD analysis may be that the U.S. government wants to restrict the sales of high-performance GPU cards in China, especially the double-precision high-performance cards for Chinese high-powered computing. NVIDIA's latest information this afternoon. NVIDIA China has received a request from the headquarters. Suspend the shipment of data centers GPU cards A100 and H100 to all customers and agents in China, and other GPU cards will be not be affected. The existing stock of A A100 GPU cards of each server OEM can continue to be delivered to their respective industry customers, and NVIDIA China has not has not issues any uh, OEMs at present. NVIDIA headquarters is still analyzing the policy requirements of the U.S. government and is expected that it will take two to three days to communicate with the customers and partners in China. A few hours ago, Twitter account Stock Talk Weekly confirmed via Reuters that the U.S. government has issued a license requirement to halt future exports of A100 and H11 integrated circuits to both China and Russia. The affected products for NVIDIA cover the company's Tensor Core GPUs and that power data centers with artificial intelligence and high-performance computing affected areas of computing would be cloud computing data centers in those areas where AI is necessary, including scientific and technological advancements. NVIDIA received the notification on August 26th from the U.S. government. The NVIDIA stock dropped as much as 5% in the late trading, equaling around $400 million in sales for the company and 6.8% of revenue in the third fiscal quarter. AMD has also received new license requirements that will stop it from selling the MI250 GPUs, but the company can still continue shipments of its older MI100 GPUs. The AMD Instinct MI100 chips are also used in research computing as a learning accelerator. The upcoming Frontier supercomputer is powered by AMD's MI200 and EPIC chips. Before today's ruling, China has worked towards creating alternatives to various technology and advancements that the country has depended on from the two companies. This move from the country would make them self-reliant and less dependent on the United States for components. At the same time, companies in the U.S. have felt scrutiny from the government in each company's dealings with China as the government sees the country as a growing security risk, as they should. This is actually pretty interesting in general. Definitely not something I expected to necessarily take place here. Now, obviously, this only affects the data center GPUs, uh, the higher end ones for high powered computing and AI and that sort of thing. We'll have to see why exactly this is all taking place. Obviously, sanctions, that sort of stuff is taking place more and more frequently as it pertains to China and Russia. Uh, more towards Russia, it's kind of interesting that China's getting uh, looped into this one in particular right now. Um, I don't know exactly the reasoning behind this from the government right now, right? I would assume it's because 
obviously with technology you want to be ahead in the technology sphere you want to be competitive and that would be one of the reasons uh it also is kind of interesting because the the fact of the matter is is most of this manufacturing is done, being done by china anyways so when we're talking about you know the availability of the technology to china well they can just reverse engineer it because they're manufacturing it in the first place uh, most of the time. That's why they started their own GPU companies and so on here recently. So maybe this is kind of too little too late if we're talking about kind of a technological war uh, between, you know, Western countries and, and, and China or in Russia, essentially. It, it, it feels too little too late. I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions on that in the comment section and the live chat. And then let's get into more technology news. It's kind of, everything's kind of blowing up today. Qualcomm gets sued by ARM. And this is for its Nuvia acquisition, putting the chip maker's ambitious custom chip plans in jeopardy. Qualcomm recently uh, completed its Nuvia acquisition for $1.4 billion to bolster custom chipset designs which, uh, with an aim to make powerful products and take on multiple categories. Unfortunately, ARM believes that San Diego intended to transfer Nuvia's licenses without consent and is therefore being taken to court for its actions. ARM apparently attempted to fix the issue when Nuvia's license expired in March, but according to a British chip design firm, Qualcomm has failed to hold its end of the deal and therefore will have to face legal repercussions. Though Qualcomm has yet to respond to the lawsuit, ARM said the following statement regarding the action it is taking against its partner. In a nutshell, ARM wants Qualcomm to get rid of any Nuvia-made chip designs prior to its acquisition. And this is obviously due to the fact that Qualcomm and ARM are in direct competition with each other, right? So at the end of the day, like if there's any way that they can prevent them from basically getting an upper hand on any sort of technology, they're going to do that, even if they have to do it through like legal means, right? ARM takes pride in its role as an innovator of the world's most critical semiconductor IP and the billions of devices that run on ARM. These technological achievements have required years of research and significant costs that should be recognized and respected. As an intellectual property company, it is incumbent upon us to protect our rights and the rights of our ecosystem. We work vigorously to protect what is rightfully ours, and we are confident that the courts will agree with us. Nuvia is an essential stepping stone for Qualcomm since the latter does not design its own chips. Instead, it licenses designs from ARM. With the acquisition, Qualcomm would be able to develop custom ARM chips like Apple, and in doing so, we could see significantly improved products down the road for, for the portable computer market, a worthy M1 competitor, essentially. One thing to keep in mind is that this Nuvia acquisition does not allow Qualcomm to compete with Apple, but also with Intel and AMD since they do not need to rely on design licenses to get the job done. Sadly, with the latest development, we will likely see both firms duke it out in court with the legal processes likely lasting for years unless one or both parties comes to an agreement. So we basically with this acquisition had the potential to have more competitors surrounding this market, but they are getting shut down by basically legal jargon at the end of the day and red tape. That is what it is. Thanks for checking out this clip from the crypto mining show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.